Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Salem by Night Chronicle. I am the Ravnos Archon. I am Will, and I will be your storyteller this evening. And last, we left off with our Camarilla group. We opened up at the Elahe Country Club, where the prince and most of the primogen had gathered for Tulip's introduction of her childer, Miss Kathleen Carver. Uh, we saw the beginning of a coterie group brought together to investigate the Quay gene that had begun to expand out from the Orpheus Theater, and we were introduced to the group as a whole. It is currently Saturday, November the 3rd, 1984, and the nights are chilly here in uh, Salem, Oregon. Uh, the group was asked to focus on the historic downtown of Salem as the new group, uh, the new Koi Jean group, is expanding out. Um, we revealed that uh, the Nosferatu have gotten quiet as of late since Mickey's death. And uh, Miss Ivory Larson heard the Bruja and Ventru Primogen whispering about already having had a coterie looking into the expansion, uh, but one of them blames Baron Reynolds uh, for the lack of communication. Uh, she also heard the Tremere and Toreador Primogen, Primogen whispering about uh, not worrying about Carl as he, as the Tremere Primogen is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, willing to vouch for his clanmate. Outside, they opened up the file to discover that it had information about the Orpheus and how it was unceremoniously bought out by a group from California. Um, the previous owner was uh, Wesley Ian Garter. And they saw that one of the other names was redacted, uh, though they did see what is a capital G or Q and a capital B. Um, they learned that the group that took over is called the Zhao Long Group, and that the spokes spokesperson is called the Li Min Bao Zhu. Um, Carl shared a little bit of what he had learned about the Kui Jin and how they're considered a, a disgraced type of vampire outside the whole of kindred society and how they're supposed to sustain themselves off of the yin and yang energy uh, which is completely different to how kindred society works um he also shared that they are hostile towards any non quaging uh but they also learned that the group had acquired the building uh, another building in the metropolitan downtown area uh, and then they were in negotiations to acquire one of the bars on the strip called the Hangman's Knot. Uh, they all separated and met up at the Albatross, where they got to meet uh, the resident uh, <clears throat> Thin Blood, Marcus Bradley. Uh, they saw the place was pretty full. There was a light flurry of snow that started as he, uh, as he arrived. Um, and they noticed that the band playing is called Edgar Allan Poe's Remorse. Um, not a bad cover band, but not great either. Um, they saw Marcus create a drink using some of his Thin Blood Alchemy that resembled uh, enough of the Vitae to kind of quell some of the hunger, but not a lot of it. Uh, they saw him using blood beads as a basis for each drink. And they also, Carl noticed that he had symbols, alchemical drawings along his mixing cup. Um, and he managed to discover what all of them were. And then he read them off to him in alphabetical order, um, proving that not only is he a nerd, but he is also a facetious nerd. Uh, <clears throat> they asked him what he knows about the group at the Orpheus. And they were told that in California, that they were in California until the Anarch Revolt of the 40s. Uh, he also asked him to bring proof of any demon activity um, that he's heard about from Erickson Wood out in uh, Riverside, how they had fought a demon in West Salem. Um, they also learned that Erickson Wood has a bar called The Last Call. Um, and they were also warned, warned that West Salem belongs to Grant Reynolds, and that he's established, uh, he's given out three domains in his barony. Uh, and that if they should need to find a place uh, that's neutral territory, they can go all the way north to Salem Town, um, where they can meet up at the Last Call Bar, as that is Otis King's territory, and his coterie uh, protect Salem Town and have created a little bastion for the Camarilla there. Uh, though it, it is neutral territory to anyone and everyone. Uh, but... They were also warned that John Coulson is uh, 
his coterie's snake in the grass, and that he's always looking out for himself. Uh, Carl showed a little bit of rudimentary knowledge on what he knows about demons, and what could be considered a demon. Um, but as they went off to the last call, they got to see that it was in shambles as it's currently being re uh, rebuilt from the last uh, tragedy that befell it. Uh, but they got to meet Teddy, uh, one of the denizens of Salem, who is a monster of an Osferatu who always runs around with his three cats. Uh, but they heard about a werewolf hobo that was living in a tent in the bar. Uh, they got to see some of the werewolf uh, glyphs that they were left behind. Um, <clears throat> and they met a homeless death harmonica player called Chuck. And uh, they learned that there, at one point, were, there was a trophy case with a revolver from the Wild West and some silver bullets. Um, there was a nice moment that they saw between Chuck and Teddy before he left. And with finding no real information uh, except for Teddy revealing the safe room that exists in the bar, uh, they left across the river to go to the motel where the demon was fought. And after coming around and looking around for anything strange, they did find um, some leftover voids of demonic existence, some traces and spatters of green blood. Uh, patches of grass and little bubbling bits of water here and there. Um, Carl took some samples for himself as well as for Marcus. Uh, and they heard something crash inside the apartment. And when they went inside to investigate, leaving Ivory outside to keep watch, Carl and Kathleen both discovered straight out of the pages of a Dungeons and Dragons a monster manual, an imp standing on the toilet about maybe three feet tall and clutching the tower rack to his chest. And that's where we left off with them. And we're going to pick up one... <coughs> excuse me. One coterie sans ivory. Uh, but hello, guys. Good to see you again. Hi. So... Um, hello, darlings. We'll make no reference to the maskless... Kathleen. <laughs> Sorry, my son took it to school. Okay, we don't need to know. Uh, but we left off with you guys standing there, um, this imp sitting, uh, standing on the toilet full height, kind of clutching this towel rack to his chest. And it just kind of has this look like it is sorry. Uh, and it just kind of holds out, slowly holds out the towel rack in uh, almost apologetically. Okay. Does he look scared? Oh, Other yeah. Than always, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'll reach out slowly. And I'll, I'll take the towel rack from him. Mm -hmm. uh, he, and I, he nods uh, as you take it. I'm like, do you speak English? Yes. Little bit. Little bit. Uh, I speak uh, Latin as well. Is which one, any any care which one? And uh, as no. he as he switches to Latin, you hear his voice shift. It's much more naturally used to this language. Okay, uh, but he he kind of looks at you. He's like, "What would you like to know? Uh, what are you doing here?" Looking for something. What what is the something you're looking for? And to Kathleen, this sounds like a bastardization of Italian. Uh, there's not as much hand movement though. <laughs> and goes, I. Am I able to pick up any type of the words or? Um, you not can, at all. You can try to make an intelligence. Um, and we'll say academics role. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Let's see what I got. Yeah. You've got academics four, intelligence four. That's yep. eight dice. Jesus. 
Mm-hmm. Remember, it's going to be seven, seven regular dice and one hunger dice. Six or higher is a success. And how do two zeros work? Because I got two zeros, okay. a five, a two, a one, and two sevens. Uh, are any of the zeros on your hunger dice? Yeah, my no. hunger dice is blue. Okay. Uh, because then, one is on the hunger dice. Then it would be bad. Uh, no, so that just counts as a regular critical success. Uh, sure. You've never really learned Latin, like sat down and learned it. Uh, but you do have the rudimentary knowledge of scientific uses for Latin. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, Latin used in, you know, law and uh, politics and whatnot. So although you're not able to pick out the finer details of the conversation, you can kind of piece together what's happening. Um, and the imp just kind of looks at the doorway and then very slowly kind of puts his hands on the back of the toilet and then kind of climbs down. I, okay. I'll go find what I'm looking for. Thank you. And he's well, what is it? Slowly starts to make his way out the door. I'll, I'll know when I find it. Okay. How did you get here? I was summoned. Proceed to follow the imp. You're summoned? Yeah. Oh, and, and I'm so rude of me. Uh, my name is Carl. What is your name? Oh, I don't, I don't have a name. We're not you given names. A, you're not given names? Huh. Is he lying through his teeth? Because I think do you have <laughs> names. Really? Let's have you make a wit and insight. It's, it's, <clears throat> Ooh, no insight. no insight for Carl. That's three regular yeah. dice. So two yeah. regular dice and one hunger. Uh, so nine, a four, and a one. Okay. And the nine is on the hunger. Okay. Nine, a four, and a one. He does not seem to be lying, um, but you also don't know if that's just because there is this driving force that seems like he keeps looking around. He is looking for something and he is uh, trying to give you as little attention as possible um, while he concentrates on whatever he's looking for. Okay. Uh, who summoned you? Uh, it, it was a man um, and he starts to describe just a generic human older you gentleman want, you want help finding what you're looking for you and he switches to english you would not know what it is and you see him slowly start to make his way towards the actual door to the room mm. and in latin he says i'll i'll go outside and i'll i'll, I'll look around there Okay, follow. Not let anything out of my sight. Can't have a demon running around them. Uh, Masquerade reach much. Right? Uh, oh. And you see that as he's about to go out the door, he starts to bend light around him and he starts to become invisible. Any right. trick? I go now. Okay, bye. And you see him kind of poof into the surroundings, almost, almost like the Predator. Okay. Well, does he poof or does he go with that blend? He blends. Like, he blends into yeah. just and it okay. just becomes invisible to you. Well, that was random. Uh, see if we can track him maybe through aspects. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> and what is your aspects at? It's just. One. Okay. So I, I'm not. I'm not assuming I have a great chance. <laughs> Just you never, know. you never know. You never uh, know. But outside, you notice that although you can't see him, you can see his outline. And as he sees that you've seen him, there's a moment where he just kind of raises his hands up, almost like he's caught, 
uh, and you see the entirety of the motel just suddenly burst into flames. Oh, shit. And so I'd like to have both of you make a willpower roll to avoid frenzy. Uh, Yeah. This would be a lot of fun. Hunger is not taking into account here. Oh, God. (laughs) And for frenzy checks, you do get to add a third of your humanity rounded down. So I believe that's going to be two dice for each of you. Yes. Six for willpower and plus two. Mm Mm-hmm. Again, you're looking for sixes or higher. All right, so I got four successes, two tens. Two of those are tens. Okay. I have five successes. I have a six, a six, a six, an eight, and a six, and I have a five, a two, and a five. Okay, yeah. Uh, The two of you kind of see this thing go up, the hotel go up in smoke, like just become this burning lighthouse, this effigy of what it was. Ivory books it. She just goes running. Um, the two of you take a step back. Uh, Kathleen kind of stands her ground. like it, 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 She does lean back uh, because this is a primordial fear, not just for humans, but for vampires in general. Um, and the imp kind of sees the two of you still standing there, and then just starts to book towards the river, running full force. I am going uh, to attempt to run after it as fast as I can. Okay. I, I don't have a lot of stamina. There's, there's no, no it's <laughs> eye contact. Yeah. Never mind. My attempt is to keep my eyes on it as much as I can as I'm running. Okay. Let's have, uh, let's have Kathleen make a strength and athletics roll. Oh. The best place. That's one. One die. It's going to be <laughs> just a hunger die. But I get one for strength and then a hunger, right? No, no. The the hunger would replace your strength. But you only have one roll. little hunger die. Mm-hmm. I have a one. We well, rolled a one. Rolled oh. a one. <laughs> that's, that's bad. That, that, that is bad. Um, so. I tried. You tried. You know, you run after this thing. Um, and there's a moment where you're suddenly overcome by, uh, this need, this compulsion, uh, comes over you and it is this strange moment, um, you have never seen a demon before. <clears throat> You've never seen an imp before. Um, and the only thing that comes over you as you're running towards it is wanting to know everything about it. Uh, all your actions are now going to be spent working towards learning its secret. What is it looking for? Why is it here? How is it summoned? All of this becomes this driving need that has taken over all of your conscious thought. Um, This is, unfortunately, the Nosferatu compulsion to want to learn every single thing about something. Um, And so, you have this moment <clears throat> you know that you're not um an athletic person but as the compulsion comes over you there is a snarl in the back of your mind there is this primordial need and you feel every single muscle and tendon in your legs tighten um, almost inhumanly and you shoot forward and you tackle this imp to the ground. Uh, let me have you roll three dice for me. Okay. I'd... When I see her book, I book after her. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to move as fast. Does it matter if it's but... my main die or if it's my hunger die? Just no, random three dice? Just random three dice. 
Uh, let's have Carl do a strength and athletics roll. Oh, you're in the same boat. You guys are oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Funny enough, not a mar not martial character. Uh, climbing, athletics was not my thing. Climbing fences and swimming. I see a lot of that in your futures. Yeah. Uh, ten? Okay. So, yeah, one. Yep. Uh, and what did... Uh, I have... Well, though, it's a, the hunger die, right? Yeah. So it's not bad? No, no, no. You, the criticals are pairs. What did Kathleen oh, okay. get? okay. I got two ones and an eight. <laughs> okay. So you come down on this imp like a fox hunting a rabbit. And as you slump it into the ground, there is an imprint of not just its body, but uh, where your fists are coiled around it has sunk into the ground. Um, and you can hear some of its bones have cracked and it Ooh. yelps in pain <clears throat> and you hear it just start screaming in some forgotten language. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but Carl does arrive, uh, a couple of moments after that, and you can hear just that screaming. It is trying to reach up its little clawed hands, but the way that she's grabbed him, uh, he can't really get any purchase on her, so he's just kind of like scratching at her forearms and trying to do the best he can to let her, let him to be let go. Right. All right, try to catch his eye and compel him to stop, essentially. Okay. There'd be a dominant. Yeah, nice. Uh, he does. It's the first level, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. Long. It says free roll. Yep. So he stops. He just sits there for a moment. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I missed. I forgot my demon binding tape today. So um, what do we do with this guy? Uh, I looked up at him and I go, I got him. Well done. I just, <laughs> I just smile as creepy as I can behind my mask. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, and, I thought he was gone. Yeah. You, you surprised. Oh. And that compulsion is still there. Like the, the fact that you can, cr you've cracked some of his muscles by just landing on him makes you note of that. Yeah, it's clearly fragile. It sounds. Does he have wings or? Yeah. 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 Hmm. Can't have that. So, I don't want him getting away, so... Let's take... I'll take, like, my belt off my pants and fucking essentially wrap it around his thing. It's either that or break his wings. I don't feel like going there yet. Okay. Uh, at least bind his arms. Yeah. <laughs> Is it evil to torture a demon? I'm not sure. No. How Christian are you? Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, this character, not very. But um, how so cute am I aware that his like bones are breaking and stuff like that? I mean, you heard it, right? Didn't we say? We... I mean, yeah, she heard it, but also yeah. the the need to learn its secrets, I think, is is far superior to your <clears throat> um, desire to not be painful. So I get very close to it. I sniff. What do you know? It smells of ashes. Like you can, you can tell me. And its eyes widen. It, it, if it wasn't afraid before, it is afraid now. You're looking for something, right? What is it? My, my, my Tell God. her. You know, like get like super stern about it. <laughs> Give him the glare. You know, lower the fangs. Okay. Yeah, I don't have presence or anything, but you know, yeah. fucking be yeah. intimidating. Um <clears throat> He shakes his head and he's like, it it, it has no words. It is 
a thing that has no substance. Oh, oh come on, sweetie. You gotta, you gotta do a little better than that. You have an idea, don't you? And you see him <laughs> trying to wriggle out of the bed. No, 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 no. You're gonna stay right here. You're gonna tell me. Because hey, we're friends like that, right? He's shaking his head. <laughs> How old you are we, by the way? What is our situation? Because I know we were in like this out of the way motel, but you... is there other people here? Now this is on fire in the background. Well, you look back. You start to like kind of and... get up and like grab. Yeah, the motel is not on fire anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, it looks like it never was on fire to begin with. Ah, uh, so illusion. Um, but you are maybe. 20 yards from the parking lot, uh, about halfway from the parking lot towards the river's edge. And as you look around, you see the office door open and a young girl, maybe about average height, a little bit taller, um, kind of lithe. And uh, this beautiful kind of... <clears throat> light mocha skin color um, looks around and jotting something down in what looks to be a, a notepad uh, and she starts to make her way towards the end of the, the row of apartments. Okay, we need to move this uh, conversation elsewhere. So. You know something and he's going to tell me, right sweetheart? And I start to like pick him up. I'm like, come on, show me where you were going. I, I, I kind of want to know what you were doing. He starts to he's he's Tell trying me. to wriggle free. So if you want to make another, I, I grab him, grab him as hard as I can. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. You, 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 you're Give him that bear hug. Make a make a strength throw. That's the only thing you have. Oh, I love garbage. Poor little guy. I'm gonna suffer. <laughs> I have only one die. Do mm -hmm. I still roll the yep. hunger die? Yeah, it's just... I rolled two die. No, you roll one just die. Just that one. For one die. Cool. Yeah, hunger replaces dice. It doesn't add dice. <sighs> I have crap rolls today. Okay. Rolled a two. <laughs> two is better than one. Um, <laughs> yeah, it didn't roll any successes either, so it is... There comes a moment where he's wriggling... And he's trying to get loose. The the belt does nothing to help. Uh, you hold on to him. And you see him get one of his hands free. And he starts to just kind of wave towards the, the young girl. And he screams out something. Uh, and you see she stops mid-stride. And she kind of looks in your direction, having noticed you now. And she kind mm -hmm. of starts moving her hand, like flagging you down. <laughs> uh, cease dominate him again and his hand goes limp to his side and it falls uh, but you hear the girl hi hi excuse me excuse me can I can I ask you a few questions uh, you see that she's coming towards the two of you three of you really right hmm Kind of busy right now, sweetheart. Uh, we can do the questions and answer things later. I look at my little friend. But let's let's go somewhere else. A little, a little better. Yeah, and you see that she sees you holding okay. this this thing. Uh, I go and like kind of move to block her view and go sleep essentially. Okay. Uh, and there's a moment where you see that she's kind of got her head cocked to the side. She's trying to figure out. Uh, if that's a kid in your possession or some kind of doll, and the second she kind of sees you step forward, she locks eyes with you, and you see there's a moment where I'm going to need you to roll your actual charisma and dominate. Right. I don't have to roll anything, right? No, no, you are, you are holding the imp down. You got that. You got that guy locked in your grasp. 
probably not good. But I mean, I, I succeeded. It's just going to be messy. <clears throat> so a 10 on the hunger die, an 8, and a 10. Okay. Uh, there is a moment where you feel uh, something kind of fighting back, a different beast uh, fighting back your con- command. Uh, but then you just see her kind of yawn and she goes down. Okay. That's good. Ooh, you you should check her wallet. Make sure uh make sure she um doesn't have anything useful in there. <laughs> Are we talking we're gonna rob her now? Is that what we're doing? Sure, I'll at least find out who this is. I mean, if you have infinite cash, then uh, sure, you don't have to do anything, but I don't have seems like free cash. money to me. That's sure. I'm sure the college kid working at the hotel has lots of money. Meanwhile, <laughs> I turn back to my imp friend. Uh, all right. So, is he asleep? No. Oh, no. He's he's awake, and he's just like... I begin to pet him. I go, you're either going to tell me what you want. Yeah? Yeah. But come on. Point. All right. Um, I'll pick I'll pick the girl up. She's at least not sleeping on the damn floor. Okay. Uh, and no, take her back inside. Leave. I look at him. No, no, we can leave her. We we leave her. We we have to find this thing. We need to find this thing now. Right. Like take him to take him to the car, and I'll put her back inside so that you know random girls sleeping on the parking lot is not suspicious. Yeah. Well, my compulsion wanting to stay in this area where the thing is, or can I move outside of this area? Um. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me have you make a uh, a willpower roll to try and leave the area, because this is where you found it. So this has to be where his secrets are. And this would be willpower by itself. So no hunger dice involved here. It's just your six dice. Fucking ridiculous. But uh, as you're finding your compulsion, uh, Carl discovers that this is a young lady named Veronica LeBlanc. Uh, she is a reporter for the West Salem Gazette. She has her uh, ID card. Uh, she has uh, what looks to be a bank card uh, about. Thirty-two dollars in cash, um, and she also has a Willamette University ID. Uh oh. Sorry, no, I got a. Sorry. I got a zero, uh, a zero, a zero, a zero, a six, and a six. Okay. Two. Yeah. Um, you can definitely fight off the urge to leave the area. But in the back of your mind, you're also like, what, what, what are we leaving behind? Okay. Yep. Um, so I follow Carl. Okay. So you put her in the room. Um, you notice that the, the wallet that she has is, is what normally would have been a male's wallet. It's a, a two-fold wallet uh single middle middle part uh leather really looks to be uh like not manufactured like this was something that was made specifically for her or family member mm. and you said i was fighting something when i dominated her yeah there, there was a there was a similar beast uh that fought back and can i taste a blood her sure or can well we find out what she is what's a taste of blood the power that he has it's a thaumaturgy thing or i'm sorry <clears throat> blood sorcery yeah we don't use that word yeah apparently thaumaturgy uh, i can't <laughs> use that anymore oh uh, so, thanks for blood. 
So resolve plus blood sorcery. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. All right. So four successes, two tens. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is definitely not vampiric blood. Okay. It, it is supernatural. And now that you've tasted it, you feel your beast recoil kind of back uh, like uh, a dog that's been beaten. Scared. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Um, so is... is... Is it her blood that's supernatural, or is it just what, like, it's a trace? No, it is It is her. She is supernatural. Okay, okay so she is supernatural. Um, interesting. What would make the beast recoil? Uh, do I have any knowledge of what would make the beast recoil from blood? Because that's generally not a thing the beast does. Yeah. It's usually <laughs> the very much the opposite. Excuse me. Uh, that you've with uh, or have read about with other Tremere um, stronger blood potency uh, like stronger vampires can make your beast recoil um, she's not kindred it's right. not that um, and so I think I'm going to have to get a intelligence and academics role from you okay well actually no yeah, I'll let you roll between academics or cult. Uh, let's see. Because we're doing blood magic, a cult is my speciality. So anything that applies? Yeah, better? I'll let it apply, sure. Okay. What does specialty do here? Re one extra, no, one extra dice. One extra dice, one extra dice. That's what it was. So you've got intelligence four, a cult three. That's eight dice total. Seven regular, one hunger. Yep. Okay, so I've got three successes, two ten, three tens, one of them being the hunger die. Okay. Uh, there's no way to, to get a bestial critical on just finding knowledge. Uh, I figured. Just you know, I'm just, just be aware that the beast um, is always there. Um, and though it tries to cloud your memory, uh, you manage to pull through the hunger uh, as it kind of snaps at the back of your throat. There is a paper that you remember reading at one point uh, about tasting different blood and how sometimes there will be <clears throat> a resonance attached to certain supernatural creatures. Uh, for example, uh, even though they are usually associated with uh, mirth and mischief. Uh, most fae will have a melancholic resonance. Okay. Um, and although you didn't taste any real resonance in the little blood that you drew from this girl, um, there the beast recoiling just kind of makes you feel like it uh it goes back to lupines of course it does oh lovely it's and we've had a few things that are regardless of blood potency are always going to register as uh something that recoils your beast okay and out of character yeah do i know the difference between lupine and kinfolk or is it just all the same all the same so far you haven't okay. come across so. one or the other to to create to a tell. bias okay yeah so yeah we don't i'm not loving the idea of our options right now so i'm watching uh. him like do all this and i'm like so i'm going to assume we're taking her with us uh she saw us she saw it she is supernatural we are 
I am unsure. She is definitely related to werewolves. I don't know if she's a werewolf herself. I'm not particularly loving this concept. Either way. Oh, what could go wrong? What could go wrong with a freaking werewolf? And the most non combating duo ever. Oh. Uh, Correct. Oh. Uh, I say we leave her here, but I'm definitely taking a vial of her blood. Okay. Uh, and we will. Yeah. How do you really plan on taking her blood? Oh, very simply, with this lovely kit that I always carry on me because I'm a Tremere. <laughs> Clearly. I mean, you are a scientist. <laughs> it's it's not hard to, to believe that in yeah. your trunk you have some kind of medical equipment. Yeah, yeah I'll be right back. So no, as he's it's, gone... It's the, it's the Tremere kit that they hand out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody? It, it, they're, they're now in lunch boxes because of what happened in Vienna. Ah, <laughs> uh, Fair. They used to be in these really what? beautiful kind of wooden lacquered uh, embossed, like with this Tremere symbol on the front and everything. Uh, velvet inside. Yep. Like, yeah, they, it used to be a thing. Now it's just like, here's a syringe. Here's a vial. Uh, here's a forged document that says that you belong to a hospital, whatever. Uh, inside, like a He-Man lunchbox. I was going to say a, a Morbius or a Dracula lunchbox, but sure. <laughs> no, no, no. It needs to be inconspicuous. <laughs> you so be the vampire like, slayer. As he's trying to get it, I'm trying to pull her like while holding the imp so that she can at least be sitting up instead of laying down. Okay. And like against a wall. Um, out of view. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he dragged her into the room, uh, so it's not that hard to just kind of pull her into a sitting position. Um, and you see that as you do that, there is a moment where she kind of just lulls her head in the opposite direction, and you almost hear uh what sounds like a like a a, a not a snore but like. In, in in between of a snore and what could be a growl, almost like she didn't like what's ha- but she doesn't like what's happening to her. Oh, um, I bet. Uh, and you can definitely feel that restlessness of like something is trying to fight this that's happened to her. Yeah, we definitely don't want to be here when she wakes up. Uh, one vial of blood, though. Your puppy, puppy. I have to know. Yeah, sure. I would like to Ugh. point out that I'm still holding the imp. So if yep. she attacks you, I'm I'm not letting the imp go. Oh, I understand. Is that disclaimer? <laughs> That's just a disclaimer. That's fair. I mean, we wanted proof of demonic activity. Oh shoot! Right, we don't. Have, we're not in the age of cell phones, so I uh, can't just take a pic. Yeah. Oh. Uh, That's kind of why I'm taking him. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Can... Should we just put him to sleep? Let's do that. Yeah. Turn him. Kind of like I mean, push him forward. I can do this the hard like... way, or I can do this my way. If let's see which one works. Yeah, sleep to him yeah. or it. And right. you don't you don't sense that same kind of bestial reluctance. It's just like he looks at you. There's a moment where you can see his fear, and he kind of like looks up at Kathleen. Uh, and when he looks back at you, you give tell him to sleep. He just kind of sits there and just like. Just <laughs> closes his the eyes. Minute he, the minute he falls asleep, I drop him. <laughs> there's, oh, a, there's a yelp of pain. As <laughs> his broken bones hit the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably dropping him wasn't the best idea, but okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. For demons. Yeah. He's learning. So, <clears throat> yeah. So obviously, demons, bro. put her put her back. Um, take her blood. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Veronica LeBlanc. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome name, by the way. Um, so she doesn't feel she... anything when you like try to cut her or anything for the blood. Probably not. I mean, she she growled. That's what she was. That's what we were saying, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Or or snoring, growling, yeah. something. Yeah. They're, uh, she's asleep. There isn't there isn't a lot that she can do, especially if it's a hypodermic needle. Like, it's a very simple pain. It's not gonna wake her up uh, from a magical induced sleep. Right. <clears throat> um but you do notice as you drive off with the imp in the car uh the moment you leave the days in parking lot it shoots up screams like it's in the most agonizing pain of its life and then you just see it collapse and as it falls over you see along the edges of its frame it starts to fray almost like it was made of threading. Uh, and you lose about 30% of him from just like the extremities kind of fraying out, almost like something is trying to reclaim it. Uh, and what's left of him is just this dead remnant. Uh, and where there would be like musculature underneath the skin and whatnot, it is all like frayed threading. It is all like it was something made of uh, thread and yarn that has just been kind of cut along the line um, of existence. Uh, and it's not just like a, a two dimensional line, like it is three dimensional, like every single extremity has been pulled out um, to the point where it's kind of like its hands no longer exist down to like this little nub uh, that kind of comes up to what was its arm and now it's just this frayed kind of extremity. Uh, it so is... does it look like it was made of yarn now? Or is that <laughs> something that was animating a doll? Or... It, it's strange because the closer you get to its core, the less it looks like it was made of yarn or threading, okay. and the more real it becomes. But as you extend outward, it becomes this kind of threading, this yarn-like substance, this kind of uh, cotton feel to it. Excuse me. And you can see that it is slowly being eaten away from the outside in. Uh, you assume that by the end of the night, this thing will be completely disintegrated. I look to Carl and I say, we get, we, we got, there's, if you want proof at all, you need to get this thing back now. Yeah. Yeah, let's book it for Look uh, back at Ivory. Marcus's. Ready to go? Oh, she's gone. She's not even there. Oh, yeah, she, she, she ran she the ran. second the fire exploded outward. Interesting. Definitely a, a, a very interesting creature. It can do illusions. It apparently frays the second it's out of range of whatever summoned it, I'm guessing. Oh, or something told like, it no. Uh, like like you said, activity. it was... Right, oh no, we've got... Activity. We've got proof times two, and now... now so let's go ahead and head back to the bar. Uh, I believe he owes you a drink. Yeah. Oh, uh, mark that hotel though. That there's something weird going on there because if there's lupine caretakers, plus uh, apparently some demon summoner hanging out we, there. We have another stop that we had to do before this, or no? I thought because it was on the way to something else, or did we reach that destination? <clears throat> no. Um. I think it, this was it. I think this yeah. was the destination. It just said for. they told you that if you got into trouble out in West Salem, that you could travel north to Salem Town, uh, right. since that's where Otis King has his new kind of um, Camarilla holdout. Uh, but that's a good half an hour still further north. Yeah, so there's no point in just driving north. So we'll head back to the bar keep. <clears throat> By the time you get back to the albatross, it's about two, two, two and change, and you can see that they're closing up. Um, are you walking in with this no. thing? Or... No, I, I, what I'm gonna let's do go, is let's go around the back. Uh, oh, and, I was gonna uh, put it in a bag. 
Oh. Yeah, we could do that, but let's still go around the back first, because walking through a club with a big body-looking bag is probably not awesome either. Oh, uh, like putting a kid in a sack. Yeah, exactly. That's sure what I was looks... thinking. Like you know, just get one of those big tote bags. People do it all the time. They just put their kids in there. Yeah, like the eighties was going to question you. Absolutely, especially in the world of darkness. Just kid toting all over the place. Kid toting everywhere, bro. <laughs> Who needs baby Bjorns? You've got sex. <laughs> exactly. Potato sex. So yeah, go pull around the back and uh, get go get Marcus and go. Hey. We got your proof. Uh, we probably don't want to drag it through the bar. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, are you all back? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll meet you. I'll meet you back there. Um, and he goes around. He opens the back door. Um, and you see that he goes to <clears throat> a door labeled maintenance. Uh, and he leads you into what looks like a large, larger than average maintenance room. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of racks uh, like metallic racks that have beer bottles um liquor bottles and on the floor there's a bunch of different kegs but he goes over to what looks to be a wall with uh three different uh kind of power boxes the one all the way on the right he turns off and you hear a clicking noise and part of the wall comes out and so you see him kind of reach around and start to pull it open. And there's a stairway going down into a basement. Okay. Oh, I knew you had a secret trap door. <laughs> I only share this with my friends. So. Understood. Very cool, by the way. Yeah. I have something similar. Um, oh, we'll compare notes later. Yeah. But he leads you down into what looks to be this extravagant office um there is <clears throat> this beautiful leather couch in front of a coffee table uh that looks to be just this marble hand that is holding a sheet of glass uh he's got a desk of some expensive looking wood he's got a bookshelf behind him that just has uh among a couple of books, but mostly records. Okay. Um, and you see him kind of sit down at the desk, and he motions to the two chairs in front of it, uh, and he goes, "Please, what do you what do you find that you uh, that you think is proof of this demonic uh, incursion into our world?" Okay. Do we have the 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 ability to get from here to the car in the back? Yeah. And we got they brought it down. Yeah. yeah. Bring bring it down. I thought we had was bringing it up, but like the okay. minute he brings it down, I grab it and I kind of like dump it on the desk as quickly as I can because I don't want it to unravel more. Yeah, right. Uh, and he just kind of you see him. And that's just that's part one. Yeah, you see him kind of shoot up out of his seat uh, as he sees the thing kind of flop and uh, with its dead eyes, just kind of look up at him. <clears throat> He's like, "I'll be honest, I didn't expect you to actually find anything worthwhile. This is." Frightening, I think is the word. Do you have any idea why it's unraveling? I would agree. Is it... Yeah, tell him, like, once we got, like, a certain... It was, like, right as we left the parking lot, right? Or so? Yeah. You were saying it, it started to unravel? Mm -hmm. It pretty much freaked out and started to unravel. Oh. Um, and died, yeah. Uh, like, we didn't kill it. Like, she broke some that... bones, but that was about it. And I say not only that, but it was very compelled to stay there and try to look something. And I felt yeah. being there that I was under the same compulsion. Anything ring a bell for what you're trying to look for? No, that that doesn't. And he pulls one of his drawers open, and you see him pull out a Polaroid, flicks it open, and just takes a picture of the of the thing, puts it down, comes around to a different angle, uh, and you see that he kind of stops and he's like, "Could you uh, could you turn it around? Maybe I don't I don't know if I should touch it." Uh, I I reach out and I rotate it with no problems. I'm like, I've yeah. been touching this thing all night. You know, you're a better person than I am. And he takes another picture of it. Uh, that's the point. Also, pull out uh, part two. Uh, two things. One, if I could get a copy of those, that'd be awesome. 
Uh, I don't know how his copies work in 84. He would Xerox? need to take another picture. Xerox still? Yeah, I, mean, can yeah, I just got a Polaroid. Xerox is a thing that's new. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Regardless, he's got Polaroid. I keep forgetting about Polaroid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I had a bunch of those when I was a kid. Um, anyway, the uh, if I could get a Polaroid of that, that'd be great. Yeah, and did, then two, I pull out. Picture. Yeah, thank you. And then I pull out the vial that I have for him. And this is, I go, this is from the battle that I believe we both, you heard about and led us to. This is the remnants of that. This was a completely separate creature as far as we know. Uh, How many of these things things are there? I do not know, but the fact that there was two in the same location is probably not awesome. We're going to have to keep an eye on this place. Uh... I agree. Uh, Because I also found a Veronica the Blank. Uh, local reporter that we have to keep an eye on now because she kind of saw something but I'm not sure what she saw because we put her to sleep immediately and then uh, she's lupine <clears throat> I'm not sure what kind but she's she's somehow related to lupines oh fuck yeah okay so I, I should mention that this thing had the ability to like create images and like yes had powers that it shouldn't have oh I mean, I've heard about certain, and he kind of lowers his voice. I don't know what you know about Ravnos, but I heard that they can create illusions. Is that's common? How common knowledge is that in in our time? Yeah. yeah. Um, not very, given that the Ravnos are kind of still a dying breed. Uh, Cause, uh yeah, because the week of nightmares already happened. You said mm-hmm. right, right. Nope. So the curse is out. Um, he's like, I've that I can say I've only run into one. Um, real nice guy. Uh, highly recommend him if you need uh, get out of the city. Unfortunately, uh, last time. He was here. He was also in the company of Grant Reynolds, so I don't know how welcome he's going to be in the city. Uh, and so, you know, uh, he didn't tell me he was going to be meeting with a fucking Anarch Baron in my bar, uh, nor was he, did he mention that that same Anarch Baron is currently uh, our city's most wanted. So, right. Um, that was a fun night, you know, explaining that to the sheriff. I can imagine. <laughs> um, but yeah, it had similar, it had the ability to blend itself uh, into light, so it kind of look at, like invisible, and like you said, she it made the building look like it was on fire, freak us out. Mm. Uh, as you can imagine, and the whole building suddenly goes up. Yeah, yeah that invisibility was... thing sounds like a Nosferatu thing. Oh. Um. Well, uh, so I saw it, and I've seen her do her thing. Plus, I'm sure other knows brought to over time. Is it the was it the same kind of process? Because I know no. there's yeah, that's no, what I'm saying. Nosferatu pull shadows. Right. I was about to say, as he says that, I'm like, that is not a Nosferatu. No. Yeah, I, like, that, so I I'm like, no. Yeah, no. I think she would know better than me. But this one, like, literally, it looked like it was bending light. I can't use the predator because I don't even think the predator is out okay. yet. But it's like it did the opposite. Um, we don't usually use light. Yeah, it looks like light bent around it, and they pull shadows to them. So it's like a different process to go invisible, if that makes sense. Mm. We've held up our side of the deal, so intel? Right, right. <clears throat> so, uh, as far as I know, uh, you wanted to... Um, Find out what I know about the Zhao Long group uh, and Limin Baozhu. Uh, that I can tell you, the Zhao Long group, um, it is not their first name. They they have existed for some time. Uh, <clears throat> the Quijin that have been running it have been running it since uh, or before even the Anarch Revolt of the forties up in down in California. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that I know, uh, that I've heard, uh, this Lee Min is definitely one of the 
members of their inner council. Um, and she has been around, if not since, definitely before the Anarch Revolt of the 40s. Uh, so I would be careful around her. She is not the um, fragile flower that they rate her to be. Right. And we're saying the 1940s, right? Just making yeah, sure. 1940s. Okay. Yeah. Um, With us, you never know. Yeah. Uh, now that's one part of the the history that I that I like where it, where it exists. I'm keeping it there. Okay. Um, as far as I know, uh, Hyde um, does not consider them a threat. I was in California uh, during the big revolt. So I know what they're capable of. Um, I've been keeping. Would you consider them a threat? I've I've been keeping an eye on them because uh, them wanting to buy up a bar down the street uh, would put them within striking distance of not just myself but of the other um, kind of hunting grounds that. <clears throat> Are neutral territory, you know. Although I do have domain here in the bar, and I and I grant clemency to some people, uh, domain is still a thing that Hyde really kind of sticks up for. Uh, being being a Ventru, it's kind of the thing that they're known for. Um, that's why he's kind of really only given his primogen domains in the city so far. Uh, I think the sheriff uh, was given a domain not too long ago. But if you don't own anything, you don't have domain in the city. Uh, so it's hard to get that from him. These people... Uh, if they buy the hangman's knot, they will be literally three blocks away from me, uh, three blocks from the Crimson Lounge, uh, and within minutes of several other places that would make them dangerous to not primogen, but definitely people that can help the tower um, so this is definitely the same kind of maneuvers i saw them doing in, in california uh and i think that they're they're looking to create opportunity um and i wouldn't put it past them to be working with reynolds in this endeavor since He's the only one that really stands to win out of all of their moves. But I also don't know what kind of man Grant Reynolds would be to kind of put his hat in the same ring um, twice in a row, seeing as how he was involved in the Anarch Revolts of the 40s, and he, he's played this card before. I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't seem like the kind to... Play the same trick twice, right? What uh, you said—they know what they're you're cap they're capable of. Do you know their abilities, like their weaknesses? <clears throat> if they're separate from us, uh, well, some of them are daywalkers, uh, depending on wow. on what kind of uh, energy they they've been consuming. I know that if they focus on one, um, it makes them much more docile. Uh, makes them almost lethargic but they can they can walk in the sun by contrast if they've been if they've been eating up the the other form of of energy then they, they become much more violent um almost violent enough to uh, to give a werewolf uh, a good thrashing so what's being done to stop them from being able to buy this tavern three books down like as of, nothing that can be as of right now uh <clears throat> excuse me 
the uh the only real thing is that um our associate uh, mr mason uh the uh the venture whip has been using some of his abilities to kind of bring the owner of the hangman's knot under his uh shall we say uh not coercion but you know favor is a better word um if mason can uh, bend this human to his will we stand a much better chance of um holding on to the knot as it were um if he doesn't um it'll be much more difficult to uh to hold on to the bar like i said hyde doesn't consider them a threat so he's not putting his full weight behind it uh otherwise anastasia would have would have been perfect she has uh the knowledge and wherewithal to handle a kind of endeavor that this would require uh she is she is one of the best venture uh, that i have ever met and she is frightening to say the least so you think we should talk to mason and or anastasia to see if we can stop the equation movements anastasia richards talk to hide. Anastasia Richards is a uh, is a kind of venture that will only meet with you if you have something she needs or wants. Um, she doesn't take kindly to uh, non Ancilla. Um, you know of anything she could be looking for at the current moment or want that we can maybe retrieve for her, get us an audience. <clears throat> excuse me there's uh there's a person that was living in her apartment building um her name is uh i want to say lydia or linda something with an l um she was there when uh connie and melvin were living in the apartment building um and they were under her protection. They were under Anastasia's protection for a, for a spell. Uh, but then Connie left town. Melvin, uh, from what I heard, lost his sire and has since gone dark. Uh, and so that left this girl uh, out in lurch. And she's kind of trying to make her own way in the world. But nobody knows where she is. Um, but... She's supposed to be Ventru, um, and so Anastasia kind of seeing that there is this wayward child of her own clan with no real sire to call on has uh, has wanted to take her under her wing, as it were. Um, so it sounds like we find Lydia. Yeah, that might be a good way to get into her good graces. Look at Carl ready for a manhunt yeah. yeah we could do that i also think we should uh i need to report <clears throat> i think i should report into the uh, what was his name the Tremere Fremigen. oh um yeah richard stephen thompson richard stephen thompson yeah there is um about the demonic <clears throat> activity that is probably not great um uh, and i want to meet up also let the sheriff know about the lupine possibility um, I mean, it is West Salem, so the sheriff might not care too much about it. I know, but if they're that close, if we can, you know, they can get there that fast. I mean, I know we're surrounded as 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 always in cities, but yeah. But I mean, just, honestly, I think if if we keep that under wraps until it becomes a necessary thing, that might work in our favor. Um, you think? Because I mean, right now. You're the only one that knows about this LeBlanc girl. Right. Uh, so that means that the, the number of people that can influence anything that she does 
is the number of people that are in this room right now. Uh, I true. have no ability to influence anybody. Right, and neither do I. But since <laughs> we are not looking to influence her, that means that uh, Grant Reynolds has no idea about her or how to influence her. True. Uh, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. If we can pit uh, this LeBlanc against Reynolds, uh, I think we stand to be in a much better position. That's okay. We're assuming she That's is not a bad LeBlanc. idea. Well, I know she is. She's just whether or not she's an actual full blood. <clears throat> I can transform into a savage eating machine versus something else. If if you run into her again, I, I'd say you play up uh, being part of Reynolds' crew. Now, where she takes it as an affront based off of him and not us on this side. Understood. I like your thoughts. We have any idea where Lydia might be at this current moment at all? I didn't see it at the last Elysium. Where was the apartment building that she was staying at before? Oh, that's, uh, that's Anastasia's apartment building called the Ivory Tower. <laughs> Write down the address. So. Hey, Carl, can I have a ride? Of course, yeah. All right. Anything you want to ask him before we leave? Because I think we should go. Uh, uh, I, think, I think that's all we need for now. <clears throat> um, any other thoughts on how to stop the question? Or is that well, you know? I mean, um, that I know of, they're susceptible to the same kind of threats that we are, fire, uh, some are affected by sunlight, some aren't, like I said, uh, beheading always works. Staking uh, that I know of is not a guarantee. Um, it is, some of them, uh, from what I have learned, can shift where their organs are, so uh, the heart's not always where the heart... The right place. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, some of them are uh, monstrous shapeshifters, so you might want to worry about that. Um, now, start looking into uh, some Asian uh, mythologies. You know, the Chinese stories of the bureaucracy, the Japanese uh, stories of uh, what do they call them? Um, the uh, the kami or or the hentai, whatever it is that they uh that they call their their spirits. You might want to look up there because there are some frightening things in their mythologies that I uh that I looked at once and I uh I dread to imagine that they could be real. Okay. Um, I will put that on my reading list for sure. Where can we find some of these books to read up on that? I mean, the library. the library or okay just making sure yeah like a special library yeah the salem municipal library downtown ain't, ain't terrible um if you can get access to it there's a special um not esoteric uh but definitely um a world um uh, mythological branch of the willamette university library it's a little small extra room that they have um i had uh a friend that was a, a student there so i would always meet up for coffee um take a peek into the room whenever i could it is a uh, it is where i started to to kind of learn about the different uh creatures that exist in these mythologies um like, did you know, uh, this scared the shit out of me, uh, but there's, there's a vampire kind of demon in Japanese mythology that comes out of your outhouse, like straight up out of wherever you take a dump, uh, and it would come up and just tear your asshole apart and kind of climb into your body and eat you from the inside out. That scared me. That kept me up for a few that days. Sounds, that sounds terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds like we stayed out of the outhouse for a couple of days. Thank God we don't need those anymore. Oh, but yeah, I mean, 
yeah, out of character, the, the X Files episode with the stupid fluke thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, never, never looked so, at outhouse is ever the same. Yep. I I looked at Carl and I go, I think we should be heading to get to Lydia before it hits dawn. I want to try and make some headway there. Okay, we look there. Yeah, at least check out the apartment. See if she left any clues. Okay, we can go there. Sit in his front seat. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, uh, thank you. Really appreciate your time. And he gives you he gives you the extra Polaroid that he took, and you notice that once you look at it, the whole creature looks like it's just made of yarn. Uh, but where it frays at the extremities, it looks like it frays into the desk. Like, wherever it's been placed, that's where it looks like it's fraying into. Like, it's becoming part of that. Interesting. I wonder yeah, then de- if it wasn't Definitely a real take imp- a sample. I'm like, I'm wondering if this wasn't a real imp then. It's part of the surrounding area. I bet money that it was also the same when we found it. I mean, who knows? It could be... There are definitely myths where the demons possess something, you know, an inanimate object, dolls, etc. Um, we didn't see are... one. Might have dolls in it. That's not true. It did it wasn't at the same location. Right. So. Head to the apartment. Could be, yeah, could be one of those. But yeah, definitely. I I asked Marcus real quick before we leave. Do you want us to leave that here, or do you want us to take it? Uh, no, no, you can leave it here. I'll. Uh, okay. I want to keep an eye on what it's doing. I want to take some notes as to its rate of decay. Um, I want to try to take some of its blood uh, if it has any left. Yeah, and if if you do, and here's that, I point out the comparison to vial. Just let me know what you find, please. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll try to get you a cop uh, an extra vial. Uh, as a appreciate that. Yeah, of course. I appreciate what you've done. He just kind of like cool. sits there looking at the at the body as you guys walk off. Like shit, didn't expect him to actually pull anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it almost looks like he is. Uh, like he, if a priest was ever given proof of God's existence, that's what he has in his face. And that's how he looks. Oh, he shook him to his core, that's for sure. Yeah, easily. All right. Yeah, you go to, yeah, right. you go to the Ivory Tower uh, apartments, and <clears throat> as you walk in, you see that there is a, uh, a front desk, and there's this large, maybe six foot five, about uh, three foot wide monster of a human. Uh, just black jacket, White shirt, black tie, black pants, uh, almost like a mafioso hitman. Uh, and he stands up and he looks at the two of you. How can I help you? Do we have the apartment number written down or did he just give us a generic address? He just gave you the address of the apartment building. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I said we were here to meet up with Lydia or Linda. We heard that she could help us. No one by that name here. Okay. Let's see if he's lying. Not that I can do anything about it. But... I'd like to see if he's lying too. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a wits and in insight. Oh, we're going to do great. Right? Right. Okay, so I got two dice. Or two successes, rather. Okay. I have four. Do I have to roll the hunger die? Yeah. yeah. Hunger always replaces one of your dice. Or as right. many dice as it has, as you have levels in hunger. One. Mm, there we go. Zero, a nine. My hunger dice is a four and a six. Okay. Uh, as far as you can tell, he is not lying. Um, he has never. It look. It it feels like he has never heard of whoever you're looking for. Um, How long have you been working here, love? I've been here for about five years now. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, then we must be, uh, I think we were mis- misinformed then. Thank you for your time. Of course. I'm not going, you know I'm not going to six foot five you, feet. Yeah, you know how to find your way out. Yes. And he sits back down. I don't want to break the venture, even if we could, but, you know, it's human. I'm sure we could probably do it, but I don't really want to fight him yet. And also, yes, that was the other way. Um, is there any elevators that I can spot from my vantage point before I walk out? Oh, yeah. Behind him, there's just a single hallway, and you can see that there are a pair of elevators on each side of him. How well lit is this place? Oh, it's incredibly well lit. It's a fancy apartment building. This is is definitely like a high end. uh, For the time period, it looks like the the apartments that you would get here are easily four digits a month. Now the fire escapes. There are none outside the building, no. Hmm. Hazard. Should definitely stack up the code. <laughs> what about uh, emergency stairwells? There's got to be those. There is. There's one on either side of him at the end of each of the hallways. As we walk out, I look up. Carl and I go, how sneaky are you? Uh, not very. Uh, stealth has never been my forte. But That's you can fine. try and, and go it alone. Absolutely. It's fine, but I would need a small little distraction. What do you need? I would need you to kind of have him turn away from either the stairwell or the elevator. Preferably the elevator. Okay. Hmm. What could we use as a distraction? All right. Let's see. There are... Well, you said it's two in the morning now, so there's not going to be a hardware store open. No. Um, that'd just be. Easy. You have I do. I was trying to go for something less destructive, fiery, destructive. Um, <laughs> yep. All right. I mean, I have a fire. It always arm. ends in fire. It always ends in fire. Always. Everything ends in fire. <laughs> yep. So I go I get ready. Trash cans on the way out. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's one uh, right to the left of the doors as you walk in. There's one uh, on the right hand side of the desk that the gentleman was sitting at, and there's one at the end of the hallway where the elevators are at. Yeah, you can either shoot something or we can catch something on fire, but that seems like the only two ways we're going to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's other ways, but that's what's coming to mind currently. Oh, sort of depends. just blocking this asshole or dominating him, which either way, we're trying to get in favor of this chick, not break her toys. But, but he has never seen her before, and he's only been there for no, five years. No, I meant the owner, the uh, Anastasia. If you go around messing with people's toys, I'm sure they're going to be upset at you. Because I guarantee you, this is not a normal six foot five, uh, random Hulk of a human. I guarantee you, he's somehow in her employ. If she, I don't if he's manning the desk. you. But how much would she love us if we found the person that she was looking for? I think right. this could be forgiven. Right. I'm just saying we don't need to break him to to do it. <gasps> I have an idea. How good are you at lying? Uh, also, not awesome. You try lying first if you want to go the more subdued way, and then you can get behind him and bang him on the head with a gun. <laughs> I was just gonna shoot and make him run out, like if he's distracted by the, the like a bullet in the you know area or whatever. The sound. Ooh. All right, and time. Here we Let's go. See. Let's add some chaos. So I, I stand up before him. I rub my hands. I'm like, all right. have an idea what's your idea we're gonna go in we're gonna attempt to lie try to get him to maybe think that we're here on anastasia's word investigate the disappearance of lydia so if he doesn't know who lydia is it's gonna be harder to trace that back 
while he's trying to figure out if you're lying, I'll try to slip behind him into the elevator and see if maybe I could try and get in without it. Okay, you can at least try it. If it does, worst, worst comes to worst, he throws us out. Or attempts to, anyway. Well, if that doesn't work, there's a trash can nearby. I'd like some right. matches from you. Yeah, sure. Gives me matches. Yeah. <laughs> Out of character. I'm looking right at you, Will. I know. I know. <laughs> he doesn't know about the wagon train. <laughs> so. Well, you haven't told her about Coruscant, so, you know. As I'm standing yeah. outside, I'm going to try and obfuscate uh, two to bring into the shadows. Yep. Um, before we begin, I grab some wipes. I wipe myself down so I'm not smelly. Um, and I'm not stinky in the sense of that. Like, I'm putting water around my neck. Um, I'm going to roll, if that's okay. Yeah, so it's going to be one die uh, to rouse. Okay. Six or higher. And I'm using, using obfuscate powers two. So that means I roll two, right? No, it's just the one die. Okay. Uh, rousing only ever has you roll one die <clears throat> per rouse check. <clears throat> um. Okay, so this would be my second rouse check. I only still need one? Yeah, it's a second level power, but it only calls for one rouse check. Got an eight. Okay. So you managed to find uh, a quiet spot out of sight of everything and everyone. Uh, you wipe yourself off. You kind of splash some water on you. Uh, and you pull on the blood within you, the powers of the beast that has given you... Um, and you pull the shadows around you, uh, and you feel like you are now invisible. Okay. I begin to walk. Um, I don't want to open the door, so I kind of just stand next to Carl and. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, I'll go in back in and. Try to lie to this guy, basically saying, well, not lie. He opens the door. I try to slip yeah. in. Okay. I slip in behind him. I'm going yeah. around him. I'm sure. staying as silently and quietly as possible. Um, staying to as much shadow as I can and getting as close to the elevator as I can. Actually, the stairwell. I'm going to go with the stairwell. Okay. So I'm changing the plan a little bit. I'm not going to try to go with the, we're investigating the, the chick route because I don't know. I don't really want to fall in line because I suck at that. Yeah. Where I want to try to bullshit this guy and try to explain to him about the, the science of surveillance. Okay, what, uh, are you, what are you going to tell him? Like, have you? What kind of cameras do you guys have? Do you have the the AX four twenty two or the where that all has you know four hundred TB or you yes. know just basically blow his brain with you know. Yes, let's try to get him to look at a surveillance camera when we're trying to sneak in. That's a that's a go to idea. Okay. Well, I'm a, I want him on my tent on me, not look at the, at yeah. the actual uh, camera. All right, go ahead and make a manipulation of subterfuge roll. All right. Uh, you see him looking at you, confused for a moment. Uh, and as you start talking to him, he starts, you see him kind of pull open a drawer. Um, and he starts to look for something. Okay, I got a, a nine and a ten. Okay. So. Yeah. And he literally pulls out the manual for uh, the cameras that they have uh, on the premises. And you see that it's a Panasonic. And the manual is, like, thick. It's a good couple of fingers thick. And he... Oh, like, can, I, can I see that? Yeah, he thumps it on the thing. And he's just like, uh, you can knock yourself out if you want. This is just a bunch of techno jargon. Uh, but I don't know what the concern is with the cameras on premises. Well, I've just tried to see because I represent a couple different conglomerates, you see, of uh, science. Uh... <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, basically a couple different camera conglomerates that could either A, improve your stuff, or B, look and see how you're, you're using your cameras to improve the surveillance. You know, like, Salesman it up. You know Salesman it up. Which, which, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which clearly comes back to the whole, you were looking for somebody that doesn't live here, yes? Right, of course, because we it was a test. Yeah. You hear the hammer of a gun cocking under the desk. Of course, yes. 
Have I made it to the stairwell yet? You were at the door. Yeah. I have to open the door very quietly, so I need a very loud noise. You're about oh, to get I one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I, I think you said it was several inches thick, right? Like the fucking thing. I'm like, you don't seem to understand how base this Panasonic thing is. He like, does oh, that. Bam. Minnie, he does like, it. I try so to open terrible. the door and slip in. Okay. The the second that you hear the banging of the book on the desk, you also hear the thunder crack of a gun go off. <laughs> Fuck sucker. <laughs> I just got shot for you. You better find something. Hold on. Yep. Uh, <laughs> luckily, I only I rolled low, uh, and it's a low caliber bullet, so I'm only adding two. Uh, so it's going to be a total of five superficial damage. Uh, okay. Halved because you're a vampire. Uh, and we'll round down for you. So. No. All right. No, you have to round up. So it's going to be three points of superficial damage that you take. Right. Uh, so it's stamina and fortitude, no, right? No, no. There is no soaking oh, anymore. It? It's just you take There's damage. No okay. Yeah. So what does fortitude do? Uh, fortitude gives you more health. Okay. If you if you take that uh, that round of powers. Okay, I just took fortitude one, so... Yeah, you have yeah. resilience, so that does give you uh, a bonus to your health equal to your fortitude rating. You would normally have uh, five health, so you have six, actually. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So... Where's the set? Oh, no, it's humanity. Oh. Um... <coughs> Excuse me. So you take three points of uh, superficial damage to you your core as you see the front of the desk explode into splinters and chunks of wood that go flying and the bullet just kind of thunks into your undead flesh oh, destroying your uh, shirt your lab coat on the uh, your left hand side and then you see him kind of stand up and hold the gun out at you one hand, the other hand is on the phone, and you see him already dialing uh, for the police. Cease. So, as he goes to dial for the police, close am I to him? You're nowhere near him. You're at the stairway. No. You need I to go I was do your thing. Him. Okay. Have I I'll have able, a, I'll... With this whole distraction, was I able to get in? Yeah, if you want to get into the stairway, you can get into the stairway. I just got shot. You better be in the damn stairway. <laughs> I was going to bite the shit out of him, but okay. No, no. Don't worry. Like, time is clearly now a factor. Yeah. So Okay. So um, the least stamina creature is going to go up the flight of stairs. Okay. Um, and I am going to... I don't even know where the fuck I'm going. Um... Yeah, we didn't exactly. You've got did. you've got the basement beneath you, and you've got all the apartments above you. I would look in the basement first, just as a thought. This vampire's not hanging out in apartments generally. I didn't think it was either, but she might not be a, a vampire, straight. We said that she might be a human. No, she was a child. She was a lone uh, wayward venture. I'm going to the basement. Let's go. Yeah. I'm gonna head down to the basement and okay. pray to God that you know. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Well, first, let's get let's see. Well, you tell me, Chewie, which yep. one do you want to do? Uh, no, no, we'll do we'll do uh, the basement is easy. Okay. You go down there, uh, and it just looks like it is a parking garage for uh, what looks to be maybe like three dozen cars uh, are parked down here. All of them look fancy, uh, easily not top of the line, uh, <clears throat> but well care cared for. Uh, there is a special parking, uh, like row for limousines. It looks like, um, not big stretches, but definitely cars that are at least extended, uh, two times to about two and a half times the regular length of a car. Um, it looks like you can fit easily three of those, uh, in the three separate bays or just one very long uh stretch limo uh 
but otherwise there's nothing out of the ordinary down here there is the power room uh there is uh kind of the power room there is a power room down here i'm gonna go to the power room okay it is locked Should have grabbed his keys. Uh, the jiggly handle? No, no, it is the round doorknob. Antinides? Antinides? So, I can stick my card in there and wiggle it through and I'll be able to open it. Because you can do that. I oh, have to, like, find something. no, there's a deadbolt. So I was asking. Yeah. Okay. Like, the, the knob turns, but it doesn't open. Is the deadbolt. Yeah. Alright, never mind. Yeah, yeah. So then, I'm gonna try and head upstairs. Okay. See what I can see. How far do you want to climb up? Because the... The building itself is at least 24 stories tall. I want to get up to a point. So I'm assuming that the elevator's not gonna go up 24 stairs. I get, elevators can't do that. That possible so at some point you have to cross over to another elevator and go up so can i get to that point and then use that elevator to go up the rest of the way uh i mean yeah you can go up um 12 stories if you want and then try to get on the elevator yes. okay so you're gonna climb up 12 stories and then switch to the elevator um back in the lobby we see the big gentleman kind of holding out the gun at Carl, the phone in his hand. He has hit nine, he has hit one, and the second you told him to cease, okay. you see his finger kind of hovering over the one, but he is frozen in place. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't think I'm a blood boil yet, so that's not going to work. Blood <laughs> potency. Let's see. <coughs> Try this one out. These are poor. Cool. Right? Right. There's not a lot. It's holding him back. Like you see that he is, his frame is shaking. Right. He's a he's a about to kind of your compulsion is about to wear off on him, and he is just sitting there. Uh, his brow is furrowed. He is he is debating. You can tell that he's probably debating hitting the last one or just shooting you again. Right. So, um. Yeah, I got. The, I'm gonna have to do the only thing because yeah, blood potency is not gonna work. None of this is gonna work that I have uh, available supernaturally, other than sleep. But I imagine that's probably gonna wear on him. I don't know. He already felt for it once. Fuck it, sleep. Okay. Because it's either that or bite his throat out, and I really don't want to break his throat. Right, I don't yet. really want to do that either. And I was like, that is my first. I like it how we're playing a vampire game. That's my first go-to. I was gonna bite the shit out of him for you. You guys are violent. <laughs> I'm actually being the most non-violent I've ever played, so... Me too! <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll your charisma and your dominate. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm just... It was like, I'm looking for any mailboxes that might have Lydia's last name or Connie's or anything like that. I'm gonna head to the penthouse. Yeah, that's gonna be... Three successes. In the first six successes. Six successes? Jesus, bro. Yeah, I got four successes, and I was excited because that's all four dice. No, no, I, I got three. Oh, okay. Yeah, I only have two charisma and one dominate, so... Okay, I, I heard six successes. I was like, bro! <laughs> I'm still impressed you got four, so... Yeah, well, four dice and nothing lower yeah. nothing lower than an eight, so... <clears throat> all right. Ow. Yeah, so, so yeah, he... basically look at him go, cease, sleep, yeah. and then... You, see, you, you see him... Just sit there, and he kind of cracks his neck as he tries to fight this thing. You've hit him with one dominate. Uh, he's a Ventrus ghoul, so he's definitely used to seeing it now that he knows to prepare himself mentally. Uh, you see you hit him with sleep, and he 
fights the urge. His finger immediately drops onto the one, and then he lets go of another bullet. Yeah, he's got to die. Now you can try to dodge since you know this is coming. Okay. Uh, so that'll be a um, either composure and athletics uh, or a wit and athletics. Uh, same result. So three dice. Can I ra- Can I uh, increase my blood? The 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 stat. Oh, surge! You sure can. Surge. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna need that. to you're gonna need to rouse for that. Right. That's one dice. One die. Nine. Nine. Excellent. So you get a bonus of two dice. Okay. Uh. Yeah, you managed to pull on the blood <clears throat> without <clears throat> awakening the beast inside. Okay. Four successes. One ten. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now that you know where the gun is, you see it being pointed at you. The moment that you see his hand drop onto the one and drop the phone and the finger slowly starts to squeeze the trigger, you can piece together the trajectory of this bullet and you easily jump out of the way uh, as you hear the glass shattering behind you. Uh, You hear him curse under his breath and he's trying to follow you with his gun staying behind the uh, front desk. Right. I'm so violent. I didn't even attack you. And um, now I'm going to attack him. I'm going to try to bite his dumb ass. Now you're going to attack him. <laughs> okay. So Stupid violent. Let me be violent. Mortal. Yeah. So let's have you make a strength and brawl. Yeah, okay. Uh, can I still get those two dice? No, the no, that that was for that was for, that was for either diving. your soldier yeah. or your your mental role. You can try it right. again. Sure, you can always try to surge. It's always yeah. going to be a rouse check, though, so it's always going to tempt the beast. Right, and there's no blood pool in this one, right? No. Right, so I'm not spending, just rousing. You just every time you rouse, you run the risk of awakening the beast and therefore raising your hunger. Right. So. That's, okay. that's if you roll one. No, that's if you roll less than six. Yeah, I, I rolled just a six, so okay. we're good. So you managed to rouse uh, to surge without rousing the beast. Uh, yep. So it's going to be two more dice to this. Three. Yeah, so three dice. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, a ten, a nine, and a seven, so three successes. Okay. Uh, I got a ten, a nine, and a six, so... Uh, you lunge at him, your fangs come down, you see that he's unfazed um, by the display of the beast, and he manages to just kind of skirt around you at the last moment, uh, and he just kind of looks down at you, big mistake, and he's going to try to shoot you again. Okay. So again... How many bullets he uses... <laughs> yeah. Again, he. You can either try uh, a wits and athletics or a uh, composure mm-hmm. athletics. All right. Uh, we will rouse again. Okay. So roll your one die. Ah, uh, seven. Seven. Okay. So you managed to get two two more dice without awakening yep. the beast. All right. One, two, three, four successes. Four successes. You just managed to uh to beat his three <clears throat> uh again you see that he's still following you with the bullet with the gun um he is incredibly composed for what's happening to him this is definitely not the first time uh clearly that he has uh dealt with uh any kind of violence um right but again Knowing where the gun is definitely helps you to avoid the the bullet. You manage to move out of the way. <coughs> hmm. Excuse me. How do you want to handle this turn? 
and shot it. Yeah. All right. Um, it's fired three times. What kind of gun is it? It is what looks to be a forty-five caliber. Yeah, is it a revolver yeah, or a... No, no, it is, it is a bolt-action semi-automatic. Yeah, that's my favorite. So it's probably got like 10 bolts it's a 19, or Yeah, it's a 1911. Yeah. So. Yeah, but like, you have another six more. That's what I was going Yeah. Yeah, because I want to take that chance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why don't uh, you just leave? I'll go outside. Like, I'll open the door outside. You could just, like, come up. Why don't me. you just leave, she says, safely <laughs> from, from a, an area of not being shot. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try to put him to sleep again. Why don't you Go try over. not to get shot? Oh, thanks. Yeah, excellent idea. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie that right on. Right yeah. Uh, so go ahead and roll your charisma and dominate. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. That's a good use. Three of successes. One of them ten. Three successes. Uh, again, you see him take a step back. Uh, there's a moment where his eyes close and then he fights it off and you see him kind of just shake his head um, and he just kind of spits on the ground. It's not going to work. That's what they all say. <laughs> and he shoots you again. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to rise again. Okay. Six. Six? Okay, Can you I managed to also do also point out that you know, four bullets might cause you know some concern from upstairs, guys. Oh, Just... Yeah. Oh, I, I'm aware. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for that's how you mark it off. Okay, I see that one. Thank you. On the character sheet, no. All right. Let's see. Blah. Three successes. Three successes. Uh, you just can't pull it off. Uh, as other time, yeah. As that <clears throat> that dominate is kind of um, still lingering, the use of the blood, um, kind of you're you're locking eyes with him. You're trying to keep your your distance, but also stay within enough of a range that you can just lash out and bite at him if you need to. Uh, and this puts you in a very dangerous situation where you see the you see where the gun is. You know where the where the gun's gonna fire from, and having outmatch them two times in a row uh you try to go for a third and this time he anticipates you and the bullet comes ripping through the side of your body uh i only got one success over you so that's going to be uh four superficial halved means that you take two more damage uh you well, look at the bright side we won in anastasia's attention <laughs> Right, yeah. right. Uh, you have one health left. Right. Die. This was right. not a yeah. dying mission. Yeah, I'll be like, yeah, I don't even. I can't even peace out. Right. <laughs> uh, so I do have firearms, but it's up to you. I and I honestly put a gun on my person, uh, like in an equipment section. Yeah. Um, uh, even the rise in your favor because you might have left it in your car, right? So, and you weren't. He said he was. No, he said that when we first began, he was talking about using his gun. Oh, true. He was shoot. Yeah, so I'll say you have it on your person. I am helping you. <laughs> oh, yeah. and in old editions, you could heal while fighting. Is that still possible in this one? You can always rouse to heal. Uh, but you have to choose. Do you want to rouse for your surge? Do you want to rouse for your healing? Right. So only one per round, right? Kind of. Depends on what you're trying to do. Okay. So, well, in this particular case, I'm going to try to heal and I'm going to shoot him. Okay. So make a rouse check to pull the blood to kind of close one of their wounds. Okay. Seven. Seven. Now All I right. see how the outsider was made. Yeah. So you heal one. You're back up to two health. Uh, go ahead and roll your composure and firearms. Okay. This I'm actually decently at. Yeah. Like, two can play at that game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, he only has a dice pool of four dice. Like, you're, right. you're meant to be stronger than this guy, but he's also... It's not his dice pool that makes him who he is, who his dominator is. Right, of course. And also, you know... 
we're not exactly old, powerful kindred here. Okay. Oh, uh, so uh, four dice, four successes. I mean, four, four successes on a five dice. Four successes. Um, yeah. Uh, I got two and, successes uh, to try to dodge, so that lowers your threshold to two. Uh, you have a small firearm, so that's plus three to your damage, so that does five points uh, of damage to him. Uh, because he is a ghoul, it is considered superficial. Unfortunately, he doesn't half it uh, like you right. do, so he takes all five and collapses. Oh, you're going to kill him. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Okay, take this opportunity to feed. <laughs> I'm not hungry, though. So I don't think I want to get venture blood in my system yet. Yeah, so he collapses. Can he do it to heal? You can also take this opportunity to come up the stairs and help me. Um, he just kind of holds his, his wound. He starts to kind of push himself back towards the far wall. Uh, you don't understand who you've made an enemy of today. I'd get out of here if I were you. Um, um. I have no real interest in murdering him. I'm like, we didn't have to escalate to violence. No, we didn't. You, cho I... you chose to, to take it to that level. You don't know who you're messing <laughs> with. And I will leave you as you are. As long as you don't attack back. And I turn around and walk out. Do you think that maybe we should get rid of the footage? Since you're the tech guy? Uh, yeah. The the tech, tech guy. guy. Yeah. I'm imagining there's cameras in the lobby. Yep. Correct? Yep. So take the manual off the desk as I'm walking around and uh, go to the tech room, I guess, behind him. Right? Or wherever it is. I'll be like, I mean, you'd, tech ha room? you'd have to find him. You have to find it. Yeah. Well, is there an office behind where he was? Nope. Nope. Why would there be? Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's just start looking around, I guess. Okay. Um, you hear sirens oh, in the in right. the distance. Probably not a lot of time. Um, so start running and looking for the room. Yeah. And as one of you is looking for the AV room, and the other one is currently on an elevator to the twenty fourth floor, I think this is where we're going to call it for tonight. Awesome! Yay! That's exactly how I expected our first combat to go. Right? Poorly. Poorly. <clears throat> uh, as always, I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank you guys for playing. Uh, I want to thank our audience for joining us. Um, as always, uh, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Uh, make sure that you are vaccinated uh, because apparently monkeypox is a thing. These are two words that I never thought I would put together in a sentence. Uh, no. Also, polio is making a comeback, uh, which... <sighs> fucking I, I have no words for that it bothers me um uh also uh on the channel we take mental health very seriously so please uh understand that it is okay to not be okay uh if you're watching live there are phone numbers going up in our twitch chat uh they'll be in the description box below if you're watching on youtube so you can reach out, uh, get some help. Uh, some of them will have a person on the other line. Some of them you can text if you don't feel like talking. Uh, you don't have the spoons for it. Uh, I know that there are days that I have spoons to reach out and talk to people. And there are days where I'm just like, I'm going to send a text message. Uh, and that's as far as my um, reach goes. Uh, I just want to sit here with my little coffee and just... Uh, write uh, and fold in on myself. Uh, so I know how rough things can be. Uh, just know that there are people who can help. Uh, if you're not in the United States, there's a link going up so you can find the help that you need in the in the areas that are closest to you. Uh, this will also be in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, so just be aware that mental health is part of our general health. General health is part of our mental health. It's all health. Uh, so if there's one thing that you can take away, it's that it is okay to not be okay. Please get yourselves vaccinated. Um, take care of yourselves. Flu season is around the corner. Uh, I know that down here in Miami, we get three days of cold weather. Uh, but having lived somewhere with seasons, uh, our shots are incredibly important. So please take care of yourselves.
Yeah. Uh, if you're a friend or family member of somebody that is a strong or happy-go-lucky personality, please check in on them. You never know how far uh, a simple hello or how are you text can change the trajectory of somebody's life. So please check in on your friends, check in on your family members, uh, check in on yourselves because uh, you are the best judge of who you are and what you can take. Um, and that's why these resources exist. Uh, so as always, thank you for being here. Uh, you can catch us tomorrow here on the channel for our Legend of the Five Rings game. Uh, it's going to get spicy. Uh, you can catch us on Friday for our Star Wars Out in the Dark finale, as that game has come to a close. Uh, there's something special that's going to replace it on Fridays, on every other Friday, so don't be worried. Uh, and if not, you can catch us uh, next Monday uh, with our Anarch chapter of Salem by Night, as we get to see what Portland has in store for our three... Uh, little anarchs and whatever they're doing um, they apparently love it there and so things might take an interesting twist when they discover how bad things have gotten just a little further north than salem uh, but as always thank you for being here we will see you when we see you and please have yourselves a good night